After episode seven aired, my dad called me to talk about it. He had several criticisms. What do you think? Uh... First, he wanted me to do an entire episode of him telling a story from Sean Amet for Dosi Zepic. Heroes, I think what you need to do is just one episode of Sean Amet. Then he wanted me to switch the Islamic Republic flag with an earlier one. And finally, he preferred I didn't talk about circumcision when I mentioned something as great as Rostam and the Shah no Man. I sent my mother every version of the episode and her response was always the same. He's very nice. And then she said, I hope Khomeini doesn't come after you. Since I rarely shy away from the controversial. This is our conclusion of what would happen if the South had won during the Civil War. She also asked me to stop going to all these protests where I might get COVID. You have to be careful, boy. Then I got a call from Aaron, my cinematographer, who was convinced the country was changing. Look at Mitt Romney. My faith is at the heart of who I am. Even he's protesting, and he was always against Black Lives Matter. Aaron even suggested I release my film, Sometimes I Dream in Farsi, sooner than later. Your film is examining racist systems. That's being broadly discussed now and will be for the foreseeable future, he said. I walked to the Air One grocery store on the corner where only a week before I was met with tear gas and rubber bullets. I thought about the mother and baby deer from episode seven, how the quote said, if you love something, let it go. And how my dad had texted me again that morning to let me know it wasn't deer on the poster, but horses. The if you love quote goes with the horse, my dad said. If you love your horse, let it go. Now I imagine horses in the place of my memory of the deer. I could see myself in Delaware at nine years old in 1984, the same year I was refused a haircut because I was Iranian, and later sitting on the floor of our living room watching the Olympics. That was when I met my greatest hero, greater than the Lone Ranger or Tonto, greater even than Rostam, and that was Jesse Owens. When we first came over from Iran, we never ate meals at a table. My mother would put down a tablecloth and we'd all sit around it in the living room. This was the normal way to eat in Iran. First, my mother would put down some bread, herbs, feta cheese, and radishes. This was your basic appetizer. Then we usually have rice with khoresh, a stew made of various vegetables that we'd pour over rice. My favorite stew when I was young was gorma sabzi, but as I got older, I switched from herbs with kidney beans and gorma sabzi to khoresh de badam jun. Khoresh de badam jun was a stew made of water, onions, tomato paste, eggplant, and chicken. I could eat three bowls in one sitting. Every couple hours, my dad, brothers, and I would take turns going back for seconds and thirds. It was like Thanksgiving dinner every day. If we ever got takeout, it was a special treat reserved for Saturdays or after a soccer match or some sporting event. The place we went to religiously in Delaware was Captain D's. It was a fast food seafood place. We'd usually all get the same thing, fish, chips, coleslaw, and hush puppies. I'd be in heaven on the living room floor eating Captain D's and watching television. On one Saturday in 1984, the Olympics were on. Lipton ice tea mix with nature sweet. And we were watching a documentary on Jesse Owens in between events. Gold medals in the 100 meter dash, the 200 meter dash. I had never heard of Jesse Owens, but my dad explained how great he was along with the documentary. He is a great runner, Pirus, he told me. He won every event in front of Hitler in 1936 Olympic before World War. Really, I said. He is the greatest athlete, my dad said and paused as we watched him now racing horses on the television. He raced horses, I said. Why? I don't understand. This is a crazy world, my dad said and got quiet. Then the documentary went back to Jesse Owens winning the 4x4 relay race. This was my dad's favorite Olympic event. And he got up on his knees off the floor as Jesse Owens sprinted those last hundred yards. Go! 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 My dad said and stood up in the living room. Hushman! My mom shouted and put out her arms to protect our makeshift table on the floor. Food! I stood up with my dad, my eyes never leaving the television screen. As I watched Jesse Owens cross the finish line in front of Hitler, I decided I wanted to be a runner secretly in my mind. I went to the library and got every book I could find on Jesse Owens. I figured if I read enough, I could get fast. Then I started practicing. My dad showed me how to stand in a track meet, crouch down, and I timed myself with my calculator watch. I went running every day with my dad or by myself. Sometimes I'd take a soccer ball, sometimes I'd go without one. Sometimes I wouldn't even run. I'd play basketball or soccer or baseball, but I still felt like Jesse Owens. I knew I had to get ready. I'd have to be disciplined like my dad said. You have to focus, Pirus, my dad would say. Whatever you want to do, you have to focus like a laser. I've been making films now for 12 years. Every year, another film. Some took longer. I've been working on Sometimes I Dream in 
Farsi since 2016, but it's really the only film I've been doing since I started as an adult in 2008. I just didn't know all these movies, all this searching, all this racing would bring me here. It's June 9th, 2020. I'm not sure where America's headed, or Iran, or the rest of the world under pandemic, but I know I need to focus like a laser. I need to get ready to race the horses, and I also need to let them go. This week, the International Documentary Association made Sometimes I Dream in Farsi, the documentary feature of the week. You can make a donation at the link in the comments or on my website. This is the end of season one of Stories Between Iran and America. We will begin again every Monday at 8 a.m. on June 29th for season two. Thank you all for your support and donations for the series and for the Sometimes I Dream in Farsi film. I look forward to sharing more stories between Iran and America with all of you. Okay. I've been fascinated with the planet Mars. I always wanted to visit now. But last night I dreamed that I was in, in the moon and watching the stars and planets. In my dream, I was mesmerized by the beauty of a blue planet. I fell in love with it. And I was wishing I were there. Suddenly, I heard my father's voice. Pirus, wake up, wake up, you're late for our trip to Grand Canyon.